Hey guys, today I'm going to be showing you some products that I regret purchasing. And I usually don't like to do like negative videos, but I thought it might be helpful for me to show you some products that I've bought and didn't really like and it didn't work out for me. Um, but keep in mind, just because I have this pro these products in my list of things that I regret buying, doesn't mean that they're bad products, it just simply means that they didn't work out for me. So I'm going to show you each one and tell you a little bit about why I regret buying it. I'm going to start off with skincare. Um, and this is the Shiseido Future Solution LX. This is a moisturizer for your face. If you've seen um, my skincare video, you've seen this already. And this is how much I have left. I believe I started using this at the beginning of the year, so it's lasted a really, really long time. Um, and the reasons why I don't like this. First of all, the price. The price was ridiculous. It was like over $200. Now, luckily, when I bought it, I bought it at Sephora when they were having 20% off last year for friends and family. So I didn't pay full price for it, but I still paid a heck of a lot for this, and I really expected more out of it which I didn't get. Um, really, this is a nice lotion, but it's it didn't do anything out of the ordinary. Like, I could get something that was, you know, an eighth of the price, and it would probably do the same thing, at least as far as I could tell. So it didn't really do anything special for my skin, so I very much regret paying what I did for it, even though I didn't pay full price. It was still ridiculous. Um, and I also don't really like the scent of it. It's kind of like a florally scent, so that's a major turnoff to me. But it has lasted a very, very long time for the price, so I guess it's not too awful, but I will not be repurchasing this. Okay, um, secondly, this is from Dior, and let's see what it's called. It doesn't say. Oh, there it is. The Skin Flash Primer. This is a makeup primer that you put on before your foundation. Um, again couple of the same things with this. I didn't like the price. I think it was like $40 or something. Um, but again, I think I got it on 20% off, but still. That's just, when they have the 20% off is usually when I buy things that are overpriced to begin with. So I thought I would try it. And it's not that it's a horrible primer, but it... First of all, the smell of it, again, with the florally kind of smell, I don't like it. Um, I really am not a fan of the brush applicator thing. I don't use it. I I just kind of I twist it out and then I put it on my finger and use it. I don't actually brush it on my face. But I don't like that. Um, it's supposed to be like a brightening primer, which is fine. I mean, it looks good on my skin. It allows the makeup, the foundation I put on over top to go on well. Um, but it kind of makes my skin get a little oily. I have combination oily skin to begin with and this really wasn't that good for it. So I probably will use it up, but I, again, I probably will, I, in fact, I will not ever purchase it again. Uh, but I will try to use it up. I've had it for a while and I never, usually never reach for it, but I am going to try to use that one up. Don't want to waste it. Okay, my next one is from MAC. This is the Prep and Prime Beauty Balm SPF 35. This came out this summer. Um, and I bought it and I've tried it. I wanted to try a BB cream. And I thought, oh, well, MAC has one, so let's try the MAC one. Um, and it's not a bad product, but <laughs> it makes my skin look a little bit kind of grayish yellow. And my skin's like a warm, like pinky toned undertone color. So I've tried using this on its own. I've tried using it under foundation and even under foundation it seems to make my skin look kind of gray and dull. Which of course you don't want your skin looking gray and dull because then you just look sick. So um, this product doesn't really work for me. I think with somebody with maybe a more of a yellow undertone skin it would work perfectly. Um, so it's not real good for me. and. It's unfortunate because this has the SPF 35, and by the way, you can smell the sunscreen in this too, which is also kind of gross, but um, but it is a nice product. It's just not the right kind of color for me, and they only make it in one color, so will not be repurchasing that and probably won't even be using that up because it just does not work for me. <sighs> okay. Hmm. Okay. Next one's a lip product. This one's from Urban Decay. 
And this is the Lip Love Honey Infused Lip Therapy. Uh, and this is in, what color is this? I don't know. I don't see the color on here. Oh, there it is. It's called um, Fail Bait. I can hardly see it. This is what this product looks like. And the name's right here, so that's why I couldn't see it. Um, it's a beautiful color. It adds a little bit of tint to your lips, so it's like a, a peachy kind of tint. Um, and this completely smells like honey, which I didn't like. I don't like how it, it's so overpowering of honey. Like it just smells like you're putting like pure honey on your lips. So I didn't like that. And I could have gotten past that though. The thing was, I tried using that. You can see that I've used quite a bit of it. It's like down to here. I used all this. Um, but when I used it, I used it for probably two weeks straight. And I think like the second day, my lips started peeling. So I thought, okay, well maybe it's just exfoliating and the layer of skin's coming off and it'll be fine. So I kept using it. And for the two weeks that I used this, my lips were peeling, they were chapping, it just dried my lips out. So it did the opposite of what it's supposed to do. It's supposed to be lip therapy, which is supposed to um, make your lips more moisturized and everything. And it had the opposite effect on me. So this will be going in the trash after the video because it's terrible for me. But again, it might work for you. And if it does, it's all the better, but it does not work for me. Next thing I'm going to show you is, again, by MAC. This is the Studio Fix Bold Black Lash. And the simple reason I don't like this is because it's really, really thick. Now, the regular Studio Fix Lash is one of my favorite mascaras ever. Literally. Um, in fact, it's probably going to be in my favorites video that I'm also going to record today. But anyway, um... I decided to try this one because it was a Studio Fix lash product and I thought, oh wow, you know, it wouldn't be bad to have the lashes, my lashes be even blacker. So I decided to try this and it's just too thick for me. It, it's a lot different than the regular Studio Fix lash, which makes your lashes more of like a more natural, kind of separated look, which is what I really like. I don't like the really, really thick false lash look. So this did not work for me. It's probably a great product for people that like having thicker really dark like false lashes false lash look um, but for me it was a no-go and I will not be finishing this off okay my next one is a hair product and I've seen people have a love-hate relationship with this this is the Tresemme fresh start dry shampoo for oily straight to normal hair so this is a dry shampoo um, I only wash my hair every two to four days. I don't, I used to wash it every day, but now I try to wait as long as I can in between washes. Um, so I decided to try this out and I hate it. And I'll tell you why. Um, first of all, it, um, well, the biggest thing is it makes my hair feel worse than it did before I put it on. So if my hair is like on day three or whatever, um, and it's starting to get a little bit oily and greasy towards my scalp. I want a dry shampoo. So this takes that and it makes it probably at least twice as, uh, twice as bad. It makes my scalp feel heavier and oilier and just gross. I would rather have the just natural oils from my hair there instead of putting this in. It just makes my hair feel like a million times worse. It's terrible. Um, I don't like the smell of it. I don't like the feel of it. I don't like anything about it. So this one is also going in the trash right after this video. And I have one more thing to show you guys. And this is an uh, this is a razor actually. Um, this is the Bic Soleil Triple Bleed for Women. This is the packaging. And this is the actual razor. I had a coupon, which is why I tried these, and these are terrible. <laughs> I don't have any other word for it except terrible. I usually use, I think, Gillette razors, um, and they're really, really good, but I had a coupon, so I'm like, all right, these look decent, you know, the triple blade, that's what I usually get is a triple blade razor, and I apply, like, basically no pressure um, when I use these on my legs or whatever, 
and I end up with little cuts and nicks all over the place even though I'm barely touching and I do use I use the skin to mint shave gel which is goes perfectly with my Gillette razors and works great but when I use this it just cuts my legs up and it's not pretty <laughs> I mean it's not like I end up with blood everywhere but I get those little tiny nicks in my legs if you know what I mean not to the point where it's really bleeding but to the point where it hurts so these are just not good razors and I will not be repurchasing them obviously I may keep them just in case I run out of my other razors just as a backup but really I would think twice before even doing that I think I would rather have hairy legs to be quite honest so that is it for my products I regret buying and if you have any questions about any of these things just let me know and I will talk to you guys real again really soon. <laughs> Take care. Bye.